Hello guys and uh, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my coaching philosophy and what I think is right to do and what I think is the right way to teach and learn chess on club level. So I'm thinking that probably I will chuck this video under the subheading of the amateur's mind again, although this time I'm not analyzing a game at all. So yeah, I will figure out what's happening in that department. Now before I go on to that, uh, I would like to react to a couple of comments. People keep on telling me that the sound quality of my videos are very low. I really don't understand that comment because I always listen to my own videos after I upload them and I find them perfectly fine. So I don't know, but I'm willing to believe you. Some other people claim that my face is not pretty at all, so I decided to cover both issues by covering my face with the mic so no I'm kidding no one said that but yeah so now the mic is a lot closer to my face consequently you can't see me that well but you know we'll see how we go with this setup um, and I also would like to thank again all those lovely people who keep on generously uh, donating uh, to the channel one way or another whether it's through patreon or simply through donations I really do appreciate that thank you very much all of you for doing that um, as soon as you reach a certain amount your name should pop up on the bottom among the top donors but even if it's not there please note that I do appreciate your work now on to business openings last time we had a dude who went for this uh, ridiculous uh, structure I call it ridiculous I shouldn't really but uh, you get the point and then I talked at length about the fact that this is a very short-sighted opening to play as wide but a very easy one to learn because it is one simple structure very easy to learn what's happening there and once you understand what you're doing you are good to go and you can play it against everything under the sun and this is where my number one problem comes with it that basically in chess we are not supposed to try to solve every single problem with the same tool because then we get to this uh, very famous uh, truism that when you only have a hammer then every single problem will look like a nail to you and uh, that's not necessarily a good thing but more importantly what is it what that we're trying to achieve and that is actually a complex question so when you are trying to learn an opening and when you are doing chess in general you need to have a very good idea of what you are doing and why you are doing it if you are playing chess because you enjoy the game and you would like to win games I would very highly recommend you to learn something like this in as little time as possible and then off you go and have fun with it if your objective is that you would like to become a better chess player than what you were yesterday and you would like to become a better chess player tomorrow than what you are today then my number one piece of advice is to stay clear of this and many other things I'm about to show you as best as you can if you would like to become a better chess player then your opening repertoire should be designed to allow you to do that and the problem with this is that this is a very short-sighted example of uh, an opening that is going to in fact skyrocket your rating um, in the beginning and you are going to win a lot of games many of them very easily because you understand what's going on in a certain structure like right here you know that you're supposed to bring this knight across here the queen is going to join the fray here or after g4 g5 on h5 and you are going to check me the heck out of your opponent and this is gonna work for a while not for long but for a while you are going to win a lot of easy games and you will feel like oh yeah you are dominating your chess club or the internet or whatever but then eventually you are going to hit a plateau because you are going to meet people who will actually know how to play against set structure and all of a sudden you are not going to checkmate them with ease if at all and in fact they are going to play quite well and beat you and then you come to the problem and realization that there is no way to step out of it because you don't know anything else so first and foremost if you would like to be a player whose opening repertoire is designed to a, enjoy chess and b to be able to improve you need to play openings that allow you to have a lot of different structures if you play d4 e3 f4 you are going to play with the same structure for the rest of your life and that is an absolute no-go because as soon as you land in a different structure you will not know what to do 
Number two, it is very important to play openings, especially on a lower slash club level, that align 100% with the basic chess principles, excuse me, that we learn even before we learn openings. What are these basic principles? Control the center, develop your pieces as fast as possible, and tuck your king away. These principles are what grandmasters at 2800 live by. It's no different. It's not something that we feed to our kids when they are little, because that's the basics of the basics. And then as soon as they understand it, we just wipe it off the face of the earth. And then we start instead playing proper chess. Uh -uh. That is proper chess. And it's not going to change regardless of what your level you are on. Every now and then we override certain rules and sub rules for a reason. But the main core of every chess player's opening repertoire should be the principles of center development and king safety. And once again, your opening repertoire should be such that it allows you a wide scope of structures, predominantly pawn structures, so that you are facing a lot of different things. What am I talking about? It is a good idea to play an opening. The Nimzo Indian is one of the ultimate go-tos when it comes to, for example, black repertoire, because almost every pawn structure is available to you from this opening. What am I talking about? Let's have a look at one of the biggest main lines, which is the E3 system. Against this, you can play a very, very, very closed pawn structure, which is called uh, the Hübner system, when uh, we simply land in something like this. Now, stuff doesn't get more close than this. Yeah, totally blocked off pawn structure. White has got the two bishops, black has got the two knights. I don't really want to get into it now by explaining what's happening here. Just take it granted that this can happen. Then, if black wants to play differently, he can easily land himself in a very flexible pawn structure where the center hasn't been defined at all. And a lot of things can still happen. Normally, black is playing for e5. And even after that, it can go closed, it can be opened, or it can be an isolated pawn structure. Or, if black really wants to do so, he can actually take on c4. He can then take on d4, then castle. And all of a sudden, we are playing against an isolated pawn structure, which is a crucially important one to know inside out for both colors just like the close one, or in some rainy days, we can even land in a uh, I, uh, in a hanging pawn pawn structure when let's say we take, uh, we castle, castle, take, 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 b6, bishop, back, bishop, b7, just one of the many setups I'm going to put on the board, when we have got the hanging pawns. Another super important pawn structure to know for both colors, and once again, you may have noticed that whilst I'm talking about the pawn structure, I'm always showing you positions where both sides are fully developed, king safe, and there is a certain amount of focus put into controlling the center, although it seems like black actually failed miserably with that. The picture is a lot more complex, but I don't want to get into that now deeper than necessary. So here we go. We have an opening that follows every single rule that we like to live by. Development, center, king safety. Now let's compare that to the French. So why do I not like to teach the French to my students? Here is an ultimate example of that. Black's position is very, very passive and cramped. Yeah, no doubts about that. This is a structure that if I play the classical French as black, I'm going to have 60% of the time. Does it allow me to play different structures? Not at all. It is going to be this rigid stuff all the time. I never will see a black piece, a black bishop in operation at all. I'm always playing with this inferior uh, French bishop stuck back there. And whilst I do know that this is opening theory, and I also do know that it's not necessarily that bad for black, I have already violated many, many opening principles. Lack of central control, horrid development. I mean, let's face it. 
after Castle Snyder Freeze and let's say yeah let's just stop here I mean this is a disaster and I'm one move away from completing development now once again I'm not saying this is a bad opening what I'm saying is it's a bad opening to start off with because this is going to overwrite in your mind after a while what you've learned about openings because you are totally used to the fact that you have zero central control and after a while you will go like yeah that's totally okay I used to do that all the time in the French uh -uh, it's not okay at all it is okay in this structure you sort of get away with it but it's not okay in general to neglect these basic principles it's not okay to have this as a piece set up because it's a total disaster in fact and the only reason why you get away with it here more or less is because the center is blocked off so the problem is that if we teach wrong opening structures that send wrong messages then they override the basic rules and then when the time comes to finally shift away and learn a new opening you will literally have to start from scratch relearning basic principles because we were used to the fact that we can live with pieces on the 8th and the 7th rank and that's not the case most openings don't allow you to do that so why on earth then wouldn't you learn an opening that never linked like the center and the importance of developing your pieces and I'm once again at total random uh, going to show you a line from the Rui Lopez where all the black pieces are beautifully and quite quickly developed and there is a very obvious fight for the center the pieces are all out they should be the bishop is ready to con uh, to join the party all good and I'm not saying that this opening is better than the French what I'm saying is that if you start learning with this then you will have a very good understanding about what's going on in openings what are your objectives what should and shouldn't happen and why when we get hit very hard by something it did happen if you start off with the French you will unlearn a lot of super basic principles that we swear by when we play chess and you will be basically left alone totally in the dark when you then start learning a new opening and again the examples are numerous where we occasionally overwrite rules okay so I, I show you one of my favorite openings is a semi-slav oops blocking in the night why do we do that that is against the Morpheus rules well I'll tell you why we do that because we are threatened to be taken on d5 and then after knight c3 e4 lose the whole entire center I don't want to take because then again new theory but again I don't like to play moves that give up the center so our only two options are e6 or c6 both are totally sound e6 blocks in the bishop c6 blocks in the knight so we already overwrote a rule but for a reason because we want to hang in onto the center all right let's move on knight c3 knight f6 knight f3 e6 now we just blocked in the bishop how is it okay well it's okay because now we are actually threatening to take this and then guard it and be a pawn ahead if they take it we take back with the e and the bishop is free to go again if they protect the c4 pawn then they blocked in their bishop too so now the fact that we blocked in ours is not the end of the world let's move on knight d7 bishop d3 we take why would we give up the center we do give up the center because we win a temple we use that to kick this bishop out and now we develop the bishop and all of a sudden the bishop that we blocked in and was horrendously looking on the diagonal has beautiful prospects as soon as we hit the center with c5 so it was okay to give up the central pawn for a non-central pawn only because we are about to do the same to them by playing c5 hitting their central pawn with a non-central one and so theory continues castles b4 knight a4 c5 and bingo fighting for the center develop pieces and after the bishop moved we are about to tuck away our king all of the rules we live by is are uh, sorry visible on the board yes on the way we violated a couple of rules all justified c6 had to be played in order to maintain the center e6 was didn't have to be played was very very logical 
the other move by, by the way d takes c4 a4 bishop f5 is exactly another main main line one of my favorites in the slav that again is designed for rapid peace development i mean look at what black is doing here how beautiful is this every single piece is out ready to castle and whilst we do not have a central pawn we sufficiently cover the center with two pieces and we are ready to contest the center with c5 or e5 later on but back to my other line so we block in the bishop but from here on we are really really hardcore work on undoing the damage that was done to ourselves by playing very very aggressively towards the concept of center and peace development so once again a beautiful choice so where i'm going with all this is that when i'm criticizing openings like um the french or there are many others that um i would be very very reluctant for my opponent uh, for my students to play like the scandinavian yeah like the scandinavian is a perfectly sound opening no refutation in sight yet after four moves we have violated every single rule that I live by in chess. Because what do I live by? Central control? Lost. Totally lost central control. Nothing in the center whatsoever. And my pawn just landed there. And not to bring the queen out early. Instead, develop your minor pieces. Is black losing key? Not at all. What will it teach you about basic opening principles if this is the first thing you learn in chess? It will teach you that it's okay to neglect the center. It's totally okay to play five moves in a row with your queen and still get away with it. Actually, it's um, knight f6, bishop d2, bishop f5, and then after knight e4, queen back. This is a theoretical line. So we played one, two, three, one, two, three moves out of the first eight with the queen. That's what we are learning here, that it's totally okay to do in an opening. It's not. It is totally not okay. In this particular case, you survive it. You do it in some other cases, and you won't make it to 15, move 15. This is why it is important to learn correct openings first. And then, even when you deviate, you need to know why you are doing what you are doing. And when you, are, when you don't have a chess coach to explain this to you, then that's a problem because then it's very easy to choose wrong openings and even if you have a coach who is there to teach you openings more often than not you find that they are teaching absolute rubbish and when i say absolute rubbish i mean openings that are otherwise good but definitely horrid for a player who is hoping to improve and yes i do know that this video is going to generate a lot of arguments and a lot of people are going to go on and telling me examples of yes but look at x and y and z who made it to 2600 with a rubbish opening repertoire and to all of that my best answer is that when i see x and y and z reaching 2600 with a totally rubbish opening repertoire that's a total waste of a lifetime and a talent who could have made it to 2750 if they actually hadn't wasted their time and efforts on rubbish openings. And I could name names, a lot, in fact. And sadly, because of uh, partly I'm Hungarian, my favorite example right now is Hungarian Richard Rapport, who does play super entertaining chess. It's awesome to watch. The problem is that he's doing it at the expense of playing absolute rubbish openings. Total rubbish waste of space. If he actually played proper opening repertoire, he would still be able to play super entertaining and exciting chess and he would be a true contestant of being a top 10 player in the world. As things stand, he will never make it there. Mark my words, because of that. Because that's his only downfall. And the main problem is that nowadays in chess especially in the very top level if you really want to be very successful with your openings you have to put a lot of effort into them and some people try to compensate it by talent carlson is the ultimate example who now very often plays openings that are not really mainstream openings on the very top of the top but he's willing to play them because the positions arising from them are playable opposed to dead equal and then, because of his ridiculously talented and very good at some aspect, aspects of the game, he can still occasionally outplay them. I don't like his approach towards chess, but I'm not going to criticize the world, number one. And he's doing it really, really cleverly.
because he chooses his openings that are still giving him a glimmer of hope of a better position, or if not that, a very playable one. And that's cool. But again, if you look at his opening repertoire when he was between 2400 to 27, when he smashed through the world between the age of 14 to 20 whatever, you will see that he consistently played mainstream top mainline openings and <coughs> he just knew them inside out and he smashed everyone with that. So, long story short, when you start building up your opening repertoire and you have the desire to become a good or a better chess player than what you are, you need to be very careful with what you go with and what you don't. I will give you a couple of examples so that you understand where you are headed and where you are not. As a white, you can very freely choose between e4 and d4, and I would restrict the choices to those two for the time being. With e4, you just play main lines against everything. Against e5, you are going to play knight f3. The scotch opening is a good choice, not the gambit. The Italian and the Giaco Piano is an okay choice. I would go for Rui Lopez number one, but that's for a later story. Forget about King's Gambit, forget about Danish Gambit, forget about everything else. Um, against uh, C5, it's exclusively open Sicilian. Exclusively open Sicilian. No closed, no C3, although I do teach this to some of my openings. And uh, the best compromise if one is reluctant to learn the open. But the only reason why one shouldn't learn the open Sicilian is because it's too much theory. But then again, on that note, my theory about the open Sicilian is that you start playing it and you learn it while doing it. Much more so than learning instead something else. And um, with that, I covered the two main responses. The rest, French, Perk, Karokan. As long as it's main line, you're good with it. So against the, against the Perk, I'm very happy with the F4 line. I'm very happy with the F3 line. I'm very happy with the classical Knight F3 main line. All good. Against the Karokan, Panov, sorry, Panov, very good. 93 main line, very good. And even E5 is very good. Um, and against French, very good, very good, very good. As long as you don't take it, it's all a-okay. And that's it. Now with d4, um, it has to be c4. There's no compromise there. You can opt on occasions to play knight f3 first, but you will find that in some openings due to move order issues, you won't be able to pull it off. So I suggest that grab the bull by the horns and go for immediate c4. And again, main lines. So if you were thinking about playing knight c3 or bishop f4 or e3 or whatever, eh, forget about it. c4 exclusively. And then main lines against the queen's gambit. Here you can both bishop f4 and bishop g5 are totally fine. I don't mind the Catalan much, but I think that it's vitally important to learn the Karlsbad structure. For that reason, it's very important to play proper bishop f4 or bishop g5 lines. Against the Slav, you can play, well, depending on which Slav. Against the Slav, it's main line with a4. Against the semi-Slav, both the Meran end with bishop g4, sorry, bishop g5, the Botvinnik is fine. I would tend to start with the Meran because the Botvinnik is just way too irrational and way too theoretical for a beginner. And e3 is very sensible and very logical in every single line if you design the opening repertoire correctly against the indian openings against the nimzo i would very highly recommend the e3 line that i told you before because it's ridiculously flexible and versatile um and against the king's indian it would have to be one of the main lines um so i would be very keen on the Petrosian variation, the Bishop E3, even the castle's main line, you name it, main line again. And finally against uh, the Grimfeld, once again, as long as you take it and you play A4, actually not even that because the Queen B3 variation is fine here too. Uh, the Bishop G5 variation is fine too. So there are lots of good choices against uh, the Grimfeld um, and it's a very important opening to deal with. And opening repertoire done. If you are black against e4, I would very highly recommend either e5 or c5. And even if you play c5, it's very important to choose a line that is flexible. 
So I would very strongly advise against the Kalashnikov because it's a rigid structure and contrary to the Sveshnikov which I would like people to play you don't have as much scope for breaking the rigidity of the structure because in the Sveshnikov the fact that uh, Black has got this very dynamic F5 breakout it just gives a lot of dynamism and potential for the position and the structure to change the Kalashnikov doesn't have it so Sveshnikov very good choice the classical Rouser is a very good choice um, I really do like to recommend the Nidoff which again looks like we are violating every opening repertoire but not really. If you want, I will elaborate on that later. I do like the Scheveningen. And um, I actually do like a lot the, uh, the old, the classical Palzen is a really good one. Very active play for black. Really like that variation too. So lots of lines to go for. I wouldn't start off with the dragon because it's very, very specific. And once you stir away from the dragon, you will find that most of the motifs that are present there are not really relevant to any other Sicilian lines. And it's very, very theoretical. So again, I wouldn't choose that as a number one choice, but it's a good option to keep available. Uh, with E5, just main lines, really. And I wouldn't touch much else, really as black against e4 unless you are at least 2200 and then you can depending on the rest of your opening repertoire experiment with openings like the french but you have to tailor your opening very cleverly and for example against the knight c3 i would only accept bishop b4 which is a very fascinating and really cool line the winner of the french but it needs a lot of chess wisdom and understanding before we go there. And I quite like for black players to play the perk. Once you have the sound understanding of the importance of center and how to counter it, and if you, for example, play the king's Indian as black against d4, then that aligns really well in your opening repertoire. If against d4, then you play the perk, because then you are very familiar with some of the motifs and structures. Once again, though, that means that we are making our opening repertoire very one-sided. But still, that makes a lot of sense to me to some extent. And again, against d4, I'm a big advocate of the Nimzo. I'm a big advocate of uh, the Semislav and the Slav. And these are the openings that I mostly teach to my students. I don't like to start off with the King's Indian, despite of the fact that this is one of my all-time favorite openings. And I tell you why I don't like teaching this. Look at this position. We have nothing in the center. And we have no hope whatsoever to ever have relevant presence there so we are defying again lots and lots and lots of basic principles and I don't like to teach an opening that teaches them at first that yep you get away with uh, having 70 million pawns in your face and you will be still fine and even more importantly if we look a little bit deeper and again I know that it's going to spark lots of crazy arguments if you look at this position it is a total disaster for black at first sight a knight that can't move at all like literally i can't move it there's a bishop that is doomed to death for the rest of its life because this pawn structure is not going to change and we are lacking space horrendously if you teach an opening for a student who is beginning with chess and you teach them that it is all good put your knight here because it can't move there are you okay put your bishop there where it has no hope whatsoever for survival for the next 120 moves. It's totally cool and preferably make sure that you have no space whatsoever for the remainder of your pieces because that's going to be okay too. Then you are setting them up for failure. And yes, I do know that this is totally playable for black and in fact I play it a lot. I love this opening but only because I do understand that the latent potential in this breakup with f5 and the subsequent kingside attack compensates for most of the deficiencies. But I needed to play chess for several years to fully understand what was going on here and to accept that it's actually okay to give more space to white and we can still get away with it. But if you start off with this and you teach someone that it's totally okay to have pieces like this in an opening, I can guarantee you that that's not the road to success. They should not see this 
as a first example of what an opening looks like when it's played well. I would much rather have them a look at the, uh, some of the either the IMSO or some of the uh, Slavs that I can't really find where they do see that both parties are actually committed to putting pieces where they belong in the center. Yeah, so if they look at this, this looks like a chess position. Yeah, so bishops are active, or controlling important diagonals. The knight is controlling important squares. All of a sudden, every single piece just seems to make sense. After, let's say, rook d1 castles, I look at it and I'm going like, yep, both players were taught how to play chess properly. They are developing their pieces meaningfully, controlling the center, the kings are safe. When you look at the king's Indian, it doesn't give you that impression at first. So that's why it's very important to start off with a sound opening repertoire that is designed to teach you chess, not openings. And this is where I think I'm going to close it off. This will be the closing sentence of this video that I'm guessing is going to generate a lot of debates and uh, whatever may come with it, that when you are learning an opening, you are learning chess. And this is something, a concept that people don't tend to grasp or understand. I'm not playing his C6 because my coach told me. I'm playing his C6 because any other case, they take me on D5 and I lose the center and I look like a complete goose. So I play c6 because I want to keep that pawn in the center. If they take, I can take back on it. And that is the justification of that move. And as soon as you play a move in an opening that was taught to you, but you actually don't know why you are doing it, that means that you are already set on the path of failure. Because there is a logic to this move, even though it technically looks bad. And then we give up this center here, not because of that was ever good, but because now white needs to waste a move on getting it back, because if immediate e4, then b5 hangs onto the pawn, and we can use that time to develop this bishop to this beautiful square where we can deny pawn e4, thereby again taking a big chunk of the center away from white, restricting them to e3, which is a really sad move because it locks in the bishop, but they have to do it if they want to retake on c4. And again, if you are a somewhat better player, then you will ask, okay, but then why don't we put it right away here? Why do we need to give up the center? Well, sadly, now c takes, c takes, and queen b3 is almost winning for white because of these two pawns can't be conveniently guarded because queen b6 loses to knight d5, queen b3 check, takes, and then white is a pawn to the good. And the reason why I explain this opening to you well, in such detail is because actually this is one that I'm teaching to many of my op uh, students and very often they get it wrong. And I do explain to them that we have to take here because bishop f5 loses to cd5 and because of they don't understand what they are doing but they try to remember, it sticks in their head that oh yeah the bishop needs to come to f5 so let's go there now. And it's an unsound move. So once again, that tells me that they didn't understand what was going on. They learned it. And of course, when you're learning it, something instead of understanding something, that's when these mistakes come into your play. So we take so that then we can control the center and deny e4. And again, every single move is crystal clear logic. Now, if white gets to play e4 under ideal circumstances, we are in a bit of trouble. So... We choose to pin this knight and occasionally threaten to take it so that e4 is not possible. Castles, knight d7, queen e2 and bishop back. The reason why this move is so good is because if we castled right away after e4, this is a bit unpleasant. Because now our bishop has to move and white is controlling the center rather well. If, however, we start off with bishop g6, then e4 is not possible because of takes and then we get to take this. Yeah, yeah, but why couldn't we do it after castles? Well, because if we take here now, they're not going to take this one. They will take on f5, hanging bishop, hanging pawn. We can comfortably resign. This is when you understand your moves instead of remembering and learning them. If you don't know why you play here bishop g6, it's a waste of time to do it. 
But if you do understand the logic behind why not castle right away but bishop g6 first, then that gives a very solid information about you and your opening and your chess knowledge that you understand the concepts. And this is why I'm telling you that openings are always about the reasons and the concepts why we do what we do. Because that is the reason why we can occasionally get away with ugly moves like this or even uglier moves like this and then that. Holy gosh, what does it have to do with the center? Well, not, nothing right now. But once this bishop comes here and we push this knight away from the center and then we attack it with the other one, all of a sudden it falls into place. But if we don't understand it, then this is going to go very, very badly wrong. Now, there is probably going to be another rant from me about openings and what to do and what not to do. But I will cut it short here or cut it off here rather. Uh, because, um, yeah, I need to gather my thoughts about where I'm going to go with this next. Plus, I'm very curious to see um, what sort of responses it is going to generate. But to summarize basically what I was talking about in this video, your opening repertoire is very important, especially when you are starting off with chess. And the wrong set of openings can basically set your chess on the absolute wrong track. Not only on the wrong track, but you're actually essentially going to go backwards instead of forward, opposed to even standing in one spot. So depending on what kind of openings you're choosing, you can actually absolutely achieve negative effect, not even neutral. And I have had lots of arguments with many chess players and coaches about it, and I'm sticking to my guns that it is crucially important that when you are teaching basic chess principles, development, center, king safety, which again is going to stay with you for the rest of your chess life, you have to teach openings at first that are almost 100% are lining up along these concepts. And if your openings that you are teaching are contradicting these concepts, then what's going to happen is that you are going to forget about the importance of those concepts. And when it comes to playing new openings, you are going to be beaten horrendously because you are going to ignore these concepts and you are going to play moves that are absolutely not doable and you are going to be beaten very badly. I think next time around, I'm going to give you some high class examples of what happens when people disobey these opening rules on higher level because of whatever reason, because we learned an opening that everyone told me was A-OK. -okay. So, principles, and then the openings lined up for those principles. And then you are set for a very good start of your chess career. So next time around, when this topic comes up, I might talk about some examples where it didn't happen too well. And the other thing that I would like to link into this conversation is online chess and the use of the computer. So I sort of wanted to upload this video because I wanted to spark some sort of conversation and debate even. Plus I wanted to give what I think is the best piece of advice to fellow coaches and amateur players as to how to choose their openings. And we are going to continue from here next time. Um, I hope that I managed to give you a couple of useful ideas or managed to stir some feelings in you about it. And I hope that the quality of the sound is also good. And I will be back with more soon, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.